Let's go ahead and do a, an example problem uh, with this parallel plate capacitance formula. Now, uh, most capacitors are actually not parallel plate. I mean, some are actually, maybe most are, because most were probably in computers if you're just counting capacitors. Um, but in this case, like with this one, it's actually rolled up. Looks just like this. If you take a look at this uh, diagram right over here, you can see what they do to save space is they actually roll up the two plates. Here's one of the plates, here's the other plate right there, and they put an insulator in between them right there, that piece of paper uh, they've rolled in there like a, uh, a, a roll up or something, uh, is the insulator. So they roll these up in a big circle and a big cylinder, but it acts just like a parallel plate capacitor. So let's do some calculations with this. Um, and here's my one farad capacitor. Uh, a one farad capacitor from the WVHS physics lab, here it is, is a rolled capacitor roughly equivalent to a parallel plate with a plate separation of 0.1 millimeters. That's the thickness of what in this diagram? That is the paper thickness in this diagram. This paper right there is 0.1 millimeters thick, and that's what's separating the plates. Now, uh, the question is, I've given you the uh, capacitance, I'm asking you, what is the area of one plate? Let's go ahead and figure that out. Well, we know that the capacitance of a parallel plate is equal to epsilon naught times A over D. And I'm also given that D, the distance between the plates, is 1 times 10 to the negative fourth meters. The question is, what is A? Well, that should be easy enough. Let's go ahead and just solve for that. Well, A is equal to the capacitance times D over epsilon naught. I just simply solved this equation for A. Now, we're going to find something that's puzzling here, but I assure you that the puzzle will be answered later. You'll just have to be patient. So let's go ahead and do this. Uh, the math's pretty easy. And when you cancel this all out, well, our farads are going to cancel there. Our meters go on top. This is going to give us square meters. So what I'm getting to three sig figs is 11,300,000 square meters. That's about 2,000 football fields of area inside this. There's something that's not computing here. But we're going to find out what that is. In fact, if it was vacuum filled, in other words, if there was just a vacuum or air between the plates, it would have to be 2,000 football fields in size. We'll find out why we can fit that all right into here and even smaller than this too. So the effective area, if it were vacuum or air filled between the plates, would be 11,300,000 square meters. Here's another example here. A capacitor used in a DRAM memory cell, it's a dynamic random access memory, which you have in every one of your computers. That's the, uh, the type of memory that when you power off, all the memory is lost. Uh, it, uh, a DRAM cell holds one bit of information. And if you're looking right here on this diagram here that came from uh, the Wikimedia Commons, we're looking at one of these capacitors right there, just one of those. That is what we're looking at as a uh, DRAM cell. It holds either a 1 or a 0. But that little tiny capacitor right there uh, has plate area about 3 times 10 to the negative 13 square meters. Very, very tiny. Uh, and let's, if the capacitor had air between its place, let's, plates, let's just assume that for now. How far apart are the plates of this 30 femtofarad capacitor. Uh, and we're going to, for reference, we're going to realize that an atom is about 1 times 10 to the negative 10 meters across. That's an angstrom, uh, typical atom diameter. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that part first. So what we are given here, let's go ahead and write down our givens. Uh, the area A is equal to 3 times 10 to the negative 13 square meters. The capacitance is also given to us as 30 femtofarads, typical for a DRAM cell. 
30 times 10 to the negative 15 farads. And we want to figure out, assuming that it's a parallel plate, how far apart the plates are. We want to know what D is. So again, our equation is going to be the capacitance of our parallel plate is epsilon naught times A over D. And I'm just going to solve for D. D is equal to epsilon naught A over C. I'm getting 8.85 times 10 to the negative 11 meters. The distance between the plates is an atom width? Can that possibly be right? It can't. Uh, you have to be able to uh, fit more than an atom in there so you can have like some insulator in there. Uh, there's something, again, something we're not seeing here, but I assure you all will be revealed. If, in fact, it were an air-filled or a vacuum-filled capacitor, that would have to be the distance between the plates. Uh, part B of this question is how many electrons will fit onto one plate of this capacitor when fully charged to 0.5 volts? And that's a that's a typical uh, that's a typical voltage that you might have on one of these, like between zero and one volts. All we need is the capacitance is 30 times 10 to the negative 15 farads, and delta V is given as 0.5 volts, what I want to know is what is Q? So for this, I just go back to my definition of capacitance. Uh, caps are quite overvalued. Solve for Q and you get C delta V equals Q. So that's going to be 30 times 10 to the negative 15 times the voltage difference 0 0.5 and that gives me 15 times 10 to the negative 15 but what are the units on that? The units are coulombs, the standard SI unit of charge. So to figure out how many electrons I got to do factor label 15 times 10 to the negative 15 coulombs and I happen to know off the top of my head that uh, one Coulomb down here is 6.25 times 10 to the 18 elementary charges. And when I do that, I get the following. To two sig figs, I'm getting 94,000 electrons. So that's how many electrons, when it's fully charged, are on one plate. I ask you, how many electrons are missing from the other plate? Well, 94,000, that has to be the same magnitude of charge on both sides.